Number three, the process of making money in NDDC comes from two sources. One from the federal government of Nigeria through statutory allocations and the other one from internally generated revenue that comes from the oil companies through the 3% that is allowed in the law. Number four, no staff of NDDC to my knowledge was sacked because part of what you are, you are, uh, you are to unravel is the, you said, and other issues. So no staff of NDDC was sacked, to my knowledge. And even the COVID allowance that was mentioned here, so the staff that are on leave also received the COVID allowances, and they are getting their monthly salaries. Number five, files from NDDC are not missing. They have been handed over to the forensic auditors. In fact, the first set of files to be handed over were about 8,000 files in number. Number six, the Honourable Minister, outside the oath of allegiance to the Federal Republic, has never asked anybody to swear to an oath. Number seven, the last, uh, the last IMC management of the Commission did not spend eight billion. The total expenditure before the Ponde Committee that they spent was about 23 billion, which is before you, because I'm sure you have the figures from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Number seven. The question of official car for any management of the NDDC does not arise because they were renting vehicles at the rate of 200,000 a day, and that is part of what we want to change. And recently, Mr. President, in council, approved that about 90 vehicles should be purchased. And for the first time in 19 years, NDDC is now going to have its own vehicles as part of the changes. The Federal Executive Council approved it recently. Uh, number seven, Mr. Chairman, just not to waste time, I'd like to just pass a, a document to you. This, uh, please, is, who is in charge? Mr. Chairman, I'm COVID free. I, I have my test results. So this is a, a document I'd like the chairman to look at. Oh, including this. Including this. Mr. Chairman, some of the allegations here is that because we watch it on television, whether from Skype or any other place, was that a former, a former acting MD was told to take votes. I want to assure you that with the document you have there was what led to the meeting in the villa, in the house of uh, one of the presidential aides, Sariki Aba. Suddenly, a, a report came out on the, on the social media that other things were after the former managing director and that the other things were being sent by Dr. Cairo Akpabio and one Emmanuel Odwaga, not the former governor. You can see it there. Secondly, the allegation of uh, Dr. Cairo being a murderer and all sorts of things came out, and they came out from the former MD. So there was need for us to have a meeting to find out from her whether there was a problem or not. And in, front, in that meeting, two presidential aides were, were, uh, were in attendance in the villa, and there was never any issue of oath. There was never any issue of oath taking to, to be loyal to the minister or for allegiance, or to sponsor presidential ambition or other. And Mr. Chairman, just for the notice of the committee, I have no presidential ambition. Then, as part of my five minutes, before I go into my uh, real presentation, there was no, no time at all, Mr. Chairman, that we had a budget when I came in. There was no budget. And as a, as a senator of the Federal Republic and a former minority leader, I know what that means. That means that we cannot spend money unless there is a budget. So the 2019 budget of the NDC was not available. And we were late because the law, the NDC Act, enjoins us to submit the next year's budget every 30th of September, at least before the 30th of September. And in the past, those things were not done. So there was no way the minister could have asked any MD or any staff to go and bring 10 billion naira to share in December. 
And that, that allegation is false and is from the pit of hell. Having said that, Mr. Chairman, let me thank you and members of the committee for what you are doing. The reason I'm thanking you is because this is part of what will bring change to the Niger Delta region. As the Niger Delta, you will agree with me that with the quantum of money that has gone into the region, what we have on ground is not commensurate with that amount. And so definitely there is need for us to do this kind of thing. The only thing is that while I was watching there, I was just asking myself, how come past parliament did not see the need to do what they are doing? How I wish that others were doing what they are doing now, right from 2001, we will not be in this mess, where NDDC will stay for 19 years without even an office, or where they will stay for seven to eight years without that same office they are occupying, rented, being connected to the national grid. So, Mr. Chairman, honorable members, I sincerely thank you, and I, I will attempt to respond to the alleged malfeasance and other activities in the Niger Delta Development Commission, if any. The first thing that came out in the press, Mr. Chairman, was that 40 billion naira was missing. I took time to explain that 40 billion naira cannot miss from the account of the NDDC, because the account of the NDDC now, under President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, is domiciled in the Central Bank of Nigeria. But before this administration, this APC administration came to clean the system, NDC had over 311 accounts. They had over 500 accounts. So in 300, 300, 300 accounts in various banks, there, was, there, was, there, were, there were possibilities of some money be missing. And so that could have happened at that time. But today, we operate the TSA account, the CBN, has the account details and they are available to you with the Office of the Accountant General. So I want to state emphatically that no 40 billion is missing. Unfortunately, people have done a lot of uh, mud slinging, character assassination, and people have done a lot of uh, social media judgment on the person of the minister and all that. I want to state, sir, that those things are false. You will see where the money went to the projects that were paid for one after the other, and that not one naira was paid to the minister, and the minister has never done a contract in the NDDC. So, Mr. Chairman, I want to say that as a Niger Delta, you and I must be very concerned about the future of our region, and that is why you are giving me this opportunity to speak. Now, having, having appreciated you, I want to recall some of the fond memories that I shared with a number of you here, I have seen a lot of you, when I was in the Senate, in the 8th Senate of the Federal Republic, as a minority leader and a principal officer. And uh, Chairman, I thought that the moment you cited me, you would have called me to speak first. Maybe by that time, Ponde would have had uh, uh, at least time to go and get some air outside. <laughs> and then what, what happened would not have happened, but uh, it's good that I'm speaking now. And I thank the minister for that, uh, for the, I thank the speaker for this opportunity. To this day, I have endeavored to discharge my responsibility together with my colleagues, or together with my colleague, the Honorable Minister of State, Senator Tayo Alashadura, and the Permanent Secretary. I have done that with a lot of zeal, the same way I did when I was the Governor of Akwa Rung State between 2007 and 2015. The propelling force driving me is to bequeath a legacy that future generations of Niger Delta will be very proud of. This philosophy, Mr. Chairman, has guided my stewardship in my ministry. And we have, by the way, we have achieved a lot in the ministry of Niger Delta, outside just the NDDC. In spite of what has happened in recent past of social media uh, condemnation and attack, to situate everything in proper context, the governors of the nine states of the Niger Delta region, at a meeting with Mr. President on the 20th of October 2019, requested for, and Mr. President approved. The, the commencement of forensic audit of the Niger Delta Development Commission. 
to find out why this child is a taunted child 19 years after and why it has not achieved much for the region and why and where the money that have been appropriated year in year out are gone to. So that process prior to this directive of Mr. President for the conduct of this forensic audit, Mr. President had done the following. He delegated to the Honorable Minister of Niger Delta the powers and duties conferred on the President in Section 7, Subsection 3 of the Niger Delta Development Commission Act. He also approved the confinement of the Niger Delta Development Commission as a parasata in the ministry, under the Ministry of the Niger Delta. He also approved the suspension of the composition of a, a proposed board for the Niger Delta Development Commission in the year 2019 until the conclusion of the city. He thereafter consisted, approved the constitution of a three-man interim management committee headed by the Eswile Acting Managing Director, which was now expanded to five. Now, the estimated cost for the forensic audit estimated was put at about 2.5 billion naira. Mr. President also approved that that should be reflected in the 2019 budget of the NDDC and should be settled by the NDDC. The composition of the board for the NDDC in 2019 was put on hold by Mr. President until the conclusion of this forensic audit. Now, the Honorable Committee is adequately informed that a component part of the NDC budget comes from the annual national appropriation as a single line route and of which the 2020 Appropriation Act signed into law by the President on Tuesday, December 17, 2019. No, this was 2020. Mr. Chairman, just a slight correction because it's on your record. 2020. Went, it actually went into force on 1st of January. However, in 2019, which was, which was what you were asking about in terms of budget, there were, the federal government had made provision for 100 billion for the NDDC as statutory transfers. Out of these 100 billion, at least to my knowledge to date, the federal government has remitted the sum of 71 billion, 195 uh, uh, million, 23,528 uh, uh, naira and 62 cover to the NDDC for the activities right, in terms of the 2019 out of the 100 billion that was appropriated for them. So the president approved the funding of the forensic audit exercise by the estimated total cost of 2.5 billion. And that was to be sourced from the budget of the NDDC. Now, the processes leading to the final award of contract for the lead consultant of the forensic audit was only completed in March 2020. And at that time, luckily, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the 2019 budget of the NDDC was passed by the two houses. So that is when we now proceeded to give the letter of award. And then, and then, Mr. Chairman, I'm sure they, they must have corrected it for you. The clerk of the National Assembly, whilst conveying the letter to us and the NDDC through the office of the SGF, actually conveyed pa passage of budget of 2020. But listening to the news, I knew it was pa uh, passage of budget of 2019. Uh, that, that document should be before you now. I don't know why somehow uh, we almost gloss over it. Because I think that was a major problem that probably led to deceit. It was converted as budget of 2020, instead of budget of 2019. I understand from the acting managing director that just last week Friday, that uh, he, he, he showed it to you, uh, to your committee, and they contacted the clerk, uh, uh, and uh, that, has, that was corrected just this last week Friday. I don't want to speak into speculation, but I'm talking of, I have the documents attached there.
So, Mr. Chairman, on the passage of your 2019 budget for the NDDC, a statutory appropriation, which was just passed, February concluded on the fifth, on the fourth and fifth by the two houses. I believe the NDDC now had a budget of 2019, and this is done in 2020. But that budget was to end on the 31st of uh, of May. A lot of underground current went into it. I will make my recommendation to the committee before I go. So, because by the time the budget was finally released by the two chairmen, the chairman of the Senate and the chairman of the House, to the NDDC, it was less than the six weeks required for even advertisement and procedure for contract. So, I don't think that budget has been, uh, has been implemented. On the passage of that budget, we realized that provision was made by you. By, by you, I mean both the Senate and National Assembly. In the sum of one, one billion, 250 million naira for the forensic audit. And passed by the two houses, as I said earlier, on 4th and 5th, respectively. The clerk to the National Assembly, in the letter he forwarded to us, Unfortunately, for what it is, 2020 budget. So we had no reason to doubt the clerk because that stayed from that March until last week, when we understand that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the acting managing director had to try to show the letter to uh, some of your colleagues, and they said no. So they took it from him and took it to the clerk, the clerk's office, and they now uh, changed it for him and gave 2019. I haven't seen it yet. But that's what he told me here when I was coming. But that is what they had. So I think some of the issues here, the confusion, as the 2020 budget and 2019 budget arose from there. So, Mr. Chairman, the acting managing director of the commission, through a letter dated December 6, 2019, I have attached a copy, transmitted to the Bureau of Public Procurement, pre-qualification, Technical and financial documents of Messrs. Jack Rally, uh, Jack Rally Limited for the for the for the commencement of the forensic audit for the Bureau of Public Procurement to appoint Messrs. Jack Rally as the lead consultant to procure and recruit the forensic auditors. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll summarize it. Mr. Jegrali was found not to, not to possess the requisite qualifications as chartered accountants and chartered forensic auditors to undertake the exercise. Thereafter, by a letter dated December 30, 2019, a copy is also attached for your reference, sir. The NDDC now immediately transmitted another letter for pre-qualification to the Bureau of Public Procurement. I mean, I'm talking about the stages. And of course, this time around, technical and financial uh, reviews were done. And Messrs. Olumiriwa, Bashiru and Co. were now given certificate of no objection uh, to act as a forensic audit, uh, aud auditors. Forensic, the lead forensic auditors for the commission. But initially they asked for 350, 335 million, but what was approved by the BBP, because you need to be briefed. It's an opportunity for me to brief you on the forensic. was about 318 million. And I took that letter to the Federal Executive Council. Sorry, I don't remember. I remember, Mr. Yes. Sorry. You have about two more minutes. So can you dwell on the uh, more on the procurement Come on the yes, forensic sir. auditors and the, Come again, sir. the procurement and the forensic audit uh, that you're that's what about. I'm telling you sir because you have just have only two minutes okay if I have two minutes then yes. I just want to say that I have attached the documentation we have concluded with the Bureau of Public Procurement the forensic auditors, the lead consultants have started work, and then the, the, the forensic is ongoing. We have now concluded 
with the Bureau of Public Procurement for the state forensic auditors because we divided them into 10 lots. So we have the headquarters which should be handled by an international uh, firm, NS Young, or NS and Young, I don't know how they pronounce it, NS Young, but they are, about the, they, they are among the, uh, the five in the world. Uh, KPMG and others could not come because they were already advisors to NDDC. Pricewaterhouse did not sum submit their uh, financial tenders. So NS and Young has been approved by the BPP in addition to about eight other companies right now. And so they, they, we pre presented it to the Federal Executive Council and it, uh, and it will be represented to the Federal Executive Council because it was with only the international organization, international origin firm that was left. We have gone through all due processes. So I have all the documentations here to give you back and forth to show that we went through all. So, Mr. Chairman, let me quickly say that I've attached all the annexures for you to look at. In line with the mandate, the for, uh, lead forensic auditors have concluded their work, and we are on course right now. I believe that the Federal Executive Council will soon give approval for the state to start. What was the cause of the delay? No budget, and also the, this uh, COVID-19 with the state lockdown. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have been on the road in the states right now, but the headquarters had already started. The forensic audit of the headquarters had started. As soon as that started, hell was let loose, as you are, as expected. Nobody should expect that after 19 years of rot, that anybody would be happy to be audited, because trillions are involved. So, Mr. Chairman, as you requested documents, we attached Bureau of Public Procurement Documents of Certificate of No Objection for Lead Consultant and Response of BPP in that regard. Criteria used for the appointment of members of the Interim Management Committee. It is an exercise of the powers conferred on the President. Then, of course, the Minister's Statutory Powers and Duties Miscellaneous Provisions Act, which I, be I believe is embedded in your bosom as lawmakers, is also attached which says, subject to the provisions of this section, the President may, in any law enacted by the National Assembly or having effect as if it had been so enacted, by order made such modifications, whether by means of addition, substitution, or division as he may think fit, for the purpose of, one, transferring to a minister any of the powers and duties which are by, by such law directly or indirectly conferred or imposed on the President or any public officer, or which are conferred upon any other minister, making provisions consequential or incidental dealt to. And other made under this section may include directions either of general nature or otherwise. Since the law is already before you have quoted the law, I'm sure I'll leave it, you go through that section. Um, a law which has been modified and in accordance with an order made under this section shall be deemed for all purposes to have been amended in accordance with such modifications. Let me say, we also have attached for you the administrative guidelines regulating the relationship between parasitals, government-owned companies, and the government itself. So, to come to the NDDC, sir. First, the job of the minister is to supervise the activities of the NDDC, not to run the NDDC. Now, I also found out that from, by practice, it is only when expenditure is up to 1 billion naira. That is when it is referred to the minister. And by, by our own federal regulation, by the Bureau of Public Procurement Act, the minister is enjoined to approach the president and approach the Federal Executive Council. So since I came on board, only three contracts have been, uh, uh, have been awarded. The first contract is the, the appointment of the forensic, the lead forensic auditor. The second contract is the fact that they don't have vehicles, and if we have to change the modus operandi of the NDDC, we must make sure that they have vehicles and not to rent and spend billions. So the President in Council approved in two batches the purchase of about 90 vehicles for the NDDC. Even in this difficult time, he has to bend backwards, and I thank the President for that. Now, that is the second contract. That went through the Bureau of uh, Public uh, Procurement, and had a no objection, and of course, he went to the Federal Executive Council. 
the third contract is this COVID contract. The COVID contract was treated as an emergency, and we're relying on your law, section 42, subsection A and B, and thereafter we'll make returns to the Bureau of Public Procurement after, uh, after under section 43, subsection 4 of the law. So those are the only three contracts. Outside that, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee, I have not, never, approved a single contract, not even one kilometer, for the NDDC since I became a minister. Because, one, there was no budget, and when the budget came, there was no time to ensure proper, proper procurement. Now, on the expenses that you are hearing about, most of the expenses, according to them, are historical debt. But one thing is certain. If it was possible for them to pass the expenses through my office, I probably would have questioned some, as you are questioning. But this is what has been happening in NDDC. Number one is that they do not even go beyond 250 million, which is within the management threshold. So their contracts are, so, uh, are divided into lots. They can have up to 75 lots, and you come under 250, 250. In fact, in the, in the chairman, uh, uh, the, the permanent chairman of your committee, the contract that was given, which we have seen dated for or thereabout, for his own area, for the roads around his place in Ore, amounting to 10.9 10, 10 billion, was, was divided into about 18 lots of 950 each, so that it would not come to the minister. So those documents are one of, uh, some of the do documents presented. Honorable Minister. No, I'm talking about what is already before you. You have them. So they did not come to the minister. So, sir. Honorable all the expenses, sir. I'm Honorable coming, sir. Just, Honorable these sir. expenses are important to explain to you. So all the expenses met so far, only one that I can say that I approved. And that was the expenses on this COVID-19 uh, uh, emergency. And thereafter, I took it to Mr. President, and Mr. President also approved. And in line with the law, it is ongoing. When it is completed, returns must be made to the Bureau of Public Procurement. So we have not in any way infringed upon the law. I want to make a final statement, sir, that one of the things you and I must change in NDDC is, number one, we must not allow this line item alone to come before the parliament. When you approve 50 billion for health and, and 80 billion for education, and then you say total 600 billion, then you drop the gavel, the two chairmen of the House and the Senate will carry it to Hilton, and only uh, the, the clerks of the committee will be there. At this stage, no Niger Delta, the, no, the plight of Niger Delta people are left to two chairmen. And then they will now organize the budget to a point where nothing has been achieved in 19 years. Now, I'll give you an example, sir. Honorable, Recent, Honorable recently, Mr. No, you need to hear me. Honorable recently, Mr. I, I'm not even talking about the... You are uh, the you against extra me. 10 I'm minutes trying, outside your time. Thank you, sir. I want, I want to help you so that they, they can no, move the region conclude. forward. Just conclude, sir. Just conclude. conclude. Just, one, just one more thing. Yeah, There are two, two things I want you to change. Number one, the budgeting process that comes before you should come with the details. If it does come with the details, it means that what the input of Niger Delta will be in the details. You cannot leave the entire region to only two people. I, we put in 1.3 billion to pay to international food and drugs uh, uh, and agricultural organizations. It's okay. To get it's okay. To it's okay. Dollars. Mr. It's but okay. that was removed and only 100 million was put it's in 2019. Okay. So the region lost 126 million dollars. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, the second thing, sir, is this bargainization of the expenses of NDDC. Uh, point, Beyond point, point of order. Below. Point of order. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I thought, I thought we should also Honorable provide Minister, solution. Honorable, I have the floor, Honorable Minister. Okay, I'll wait for your questions. I have, then I have I will the floor. Talk. I have you. the floor. The reason why I raise this point of order is on the, the, the Chairman is to precise this issue. And by our ruling, by our order, by our laws in the Parliament, Section so, Rule 10 is explicit. Honorable Minister, you. please, off your phone. The Chairman has been calling you that it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You are, the a, you are a Senator. The sorry, okay. sorry, 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 Honorable Minister. You forget that the world is watching us. Sorry, Honorable Sorry, Honorable Minister. You, you think it's okay? Honorable Minister, sorry, off your mic, please. Honorable Minister, we have been talking and saying, you know the rules of the house. 
as a former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you know the rules. We shouldn't have to be crowdy and turn this letter to a marketplace. The chairman has been calling you, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, you don't want to stop. It's okay, chairman, please. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, please. Uh, chairman, may I say I'm sorry? Because of the fact that you were saying it's okay. Honorable Minister, it's okay, please. No, no. Are you saying I should stop talking? Oh, no. Yes. Uh -huh. Hold yes. Hold yes. Hold that's what you said. Then I, I, I thank you. I have stopped. Said. I didn't hear the fan is making noise and your air condition is not working, so I, I have stopped. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Honorable Minister, thank you very much. Thank you for your beautiful presentation that you have made and uh, we thank you very much. These are some of the things we are talking about. Just to come and share light on what you have here just to share light. And that's exactly what I've done. So you will be expecting to hear there's some questions from our members. Uh, you can also address this question. So, so that is it. So question number one, uh, Ben Kalu, take the lead and uh, ask your question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate the minister for your patience uh, all this while. And we also remember what he did in Aquaibon State as an uncommon governor. We are hoping that in NDDC something that has been uncommon will be commonized. Mr. Ch uh, minister, I want to ask, in addition to your role as a supervising minister of the Niger Delta, have you ever influenced or exercised the powers of the managing director of the commission in any way? I want you to be interactive. I have about three questions for you. Please, uh, whether I've ever acted as MD. In addition to your role as the supervisory minister. Uh, minister, have you at any time influenced or exercised the powers of the managing director of the commission? Whether I've ever influenced the power of the honor minister. That is what I said. Powers of the MD of the commission. Whether have you stopped it? I'm saying, have you at any time, in addition to your supervising role, have you at any time influenced or exercised the powers of the MD and CEO of the commission in any way? Well, if in any way I, I find out that the M, uh, MD CEO is not going in the interest of Niger Delta, I will uh, intervene. For instance, I had to do that once. When I heard about the payment of Lassa FIFA, I called and I found out that they had paid the sum of $2.9 billion and they were about to pay another 972, 72 million. I had to intervene and I said they should not because there was no budget at that time. And so the, the, the contractor wrote to me and thank you, thank you. I should, thank I should approve the balance of 970. Thank you, Honourable Minister. No, let me I did not give ask. The letter no, the excuse me. Excuse me. So let me give you the letter from your the explanation is that in addition to your supervising role, that you sometimes no, influence my the answer, action of the, C, my of the uh, that, MD. Is that my answer is that in next line, question. No, sorry. The next question you, is. You didn't hear what I said. My answer is that where the this commission is going wrong. We have gotten your got answer. The next question is... This Honourable Mr. Please. Honourable Mr. This when, quest, when questions are asked by member, go directly answer the question, please. I will try my best, sir. Yes. But maybe the, the, the fan I'm not hearing well. You know, the way we are dressed like masquerades now. That, that can you go All ahead. Right. Does this intervention that you do, like you have accepted that you do from time to time, include asking and receiving 30 files from the office of the MD, 30 files, as alleged by the MD? And those 30 files had to do with the Silton, without the knowledge of the former acting MD, because she alleged when she testified. May, may, may I answer that? It does not include that. Many files were uh, almost 100 and something files were given to the, M uh, by, to the executive director by the MD. When the report of arson reached the police and the commissioner of police in Riverside had to personally visit the office, there are people who are afraid of the forensic. 
we're going to go, go, going to burn okay, them. Okay, so you, you are in custody so, of so, the files. So, okay, no, next question. The let, files let were taken to safe custody, yeah, with, and the files have been handed over okay, to the forensic with your editor. permission, without the knowledge of the MD. No, no next, not, next without, question. No, not without the knowledge what of was the your MD. Role? What was your role in the approval of 5.8 billion? for relief and palliative to flooded communities, uh, community, uh, communities under the EHSS directorate, despite the fact that there was no budget appropriation for such expenditure. I'm not even aware that such, uh, such contract has been given. I, I, I explain something to the honor member. Please listen. What, what happens is that each contractor has over 50 companies. So when they are given these contracts, they go under. Okay, since you want to hear. Since you want to know, let me give you a document. I'm not supposed to, but let me give you. Now, this document I'm giving to you to look at. You may return it to me. It's evidence of what has been going on in the Niger Delta Development Commission, which is why you are sitting. This is a document in one day, in one day, where the NDDC, in a management meeting, purportedly gave money within the threshold of the MD, 49 million, 49 million, 49 million, for, and they withdrew cash of 4.2 billion in a day. It is here, and the account numbers are here. Did you, you tender this day. document? Yeah. Did no, you tender this document in yeah. evidence? You know you are doing this, uh, uh, this uh, at, other minister, minister, did you tender sorry, it? Sorry, sir. You are doing this at the, the period when there is forensic going on. These documents are before the forensic auditors. Even what you are bringing out now, will also help us in the forensic... Okay, we take it that you did not tender it, and uh, since you're under, no, no, we, we no, wish no, that at the right time it. you tender it. You need to let me ask it. you next question. From Mr. your question, honorable, from your question. Sorry, honorable sir. Minister, let me ask you sorry, next question. Right, Honorable. Right, Honorable. From your question, you don't want to know the truth about NDDC. How? That's why we're asking you the question. No, no, you're asking me the question. No, no but you're running around. You're not going straight to the I'm question. Not, I'm not running around. I'm giving you facts. Minister, next. Honorable Minister. Chairman, please, chairman. Please. Please, Don't you want down. to take a look at what, please, uh, what please, happens in please, NDDC? Please. How would the minister know? Please. If you give a contract of $5 billion please. and you split it into $100, $100 million, it doesn't come to the minister. Okay, let's ask you other questions. If that one is difficult to answer, let's go to the next question. Honorable difficult Minister, your ministry applied for the approval of certificate of no objection via your letter dated 30th of December 2019 for the lead forensic auditor. Please, can you tell this committee the constitutional or the statutory provision that allows supervising minister of an agency to seek procurement approval on behalf of the procuring entity that is also paying for the procurement, if not that this is an action in you, uh, uh, that, that, that is uh, usurping the function of the agency? Can you explain, please? Did, did, um, did you do that? Well, let me, let me tell you, eh? number one, the, the, the no, directive... Please, 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 can you stop this? No, the agen the no agency yes. can go to Federal Executive Council without the supervising ministry. So what happened in this case is that it is the NDDC that eventually became the procuring agency because initially we thought the federal government was going to pay for the forensic. But when the approval of Mr. President came out, it turned out that we should, the NDDC should pay. And so that letter was withdrawn. We had even gone to the Federal Tenders Journal and advertised for bids. But unfortunately, when the approval of the President came, the President directed that NDDC should pay for it. So automatically, NDDC became the procuring agency. That letter is no longer operational. So we are say, you are saying, in essence, that the ministry did that function that's supposed to be done by the commission. Next question. If the are you aware that paid, BPP, if the ministry was paid Are you aware it? that BPP came here and declared the approval you obtained as a nullity when they appeared before us because they were misled in giving that approval based on the fiscal year 2020 budget? Are you aware that they came here and they said that approval that was given uh, it's a nullity because they were deceived. Are you aware of that? I will tell you that, that, that if they say so, then they are wrong. Because I told you that there are two sources of revenue for NDDC. By the time you are talking, on the 17th of December, the president had already approved the, the statutory uh, uh, allocation that will go to NDDC. NDDC has a, 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 what I may call a, a recurrent expenditure salaries and other emoluments of a total of about 23 billion in a year. 
But the federal government makes provision for 80 billion. In 2018, I think it was 88 billion. 2019 was 80 billion. Then as at, as at 1st December, it was another 80 billion. So it, there is no time we can go to federal executive council without a budget. And in any case, the law allows you to start your procurement process, and but you don't conclude it. You don't finalize it with any award until until you have the money money in the uh, uh, funds to pay for it. That is why even that award was 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 not finalized until March after the NDC budget came thank out. Thank you, thank you, Minister. Let me ask you again. The purpose of the IMC, the purpose of the IMC was to conduct the forensic audit. Uh, no, no. The purpose uh, of the IMC has the was forensic uh, audit started. The forensic audit has started yeah. a long time ago. Uh, yeah, uh, I want by to the way, the purpose of the IMC was not. This is the fundamental. Uh, this was a fundamental disagreement with the former acting managing director. The purpose of the IMC was to ensure impartiality, because at that time we had a director in the agency who had been there for 28 years, right from the days of one paddock. You cannot tell a director to sit in judgment over his own case. Just like your chairman had to recuse himself. So FEC has approved so uh, the, the appointment? The procurement. Has FEC approved the appointment? The Federal Security Council has yes. approved the, uh, uh, the uh, appointment of the lead forensic auditors. And the Bureau of Public Procurement today has approved, the, 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 uh, uh, has given a no objection to the nine when that was, will go to state. When was this approval from uh, FEC? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll be attached to your document, please. Mr. Chairman, I'm done. I know I'm not done, but I will. Um, yeah, yeah, Ben, that, that's okay. That's okay. Who's the next? Okay. Okay, I'll be ready. Okay. Eden. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, honorable minister, and our invited guests. Um, Honorable Minister, you talked about the uh, subvention that is going on in um, NDDC, and that is uh, contract uh, splitting, where um, certain amounts of money that are supposed to come to your office by virtue of the Act, the management of NDDC, they now use their power to split the contracts, you know, to their threshold, what they can approve within their confines. So I just want to find out if there is anything that you have done to address this. To, to, to stop future occurrence. Yes. Number one, I will need, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this question is very germane. I will need the cooperation of the National Assembly for us to stop this contract splitting and to reposition the agency. One of the things I've done is that there was a contract of 5.5 .5 billion given to a company called Signora, which did not pass through my office. I had to intervene and that contract was cancelled. And then they wrote a letter to me, and they, uh, what came to me included palliative, total of 6.25 billion. I now wrote to Mr. President, and Mr. President approved it, and it was announced nationally. Because the people of Niger Delta deserve transparency. So when you go and split a contract into 10, 150 companies, and then, and then it comes to 10 billion, 20 billion, the people will not know that such contracts are given. So I have do I've done something about it, that's why I said out of the three contracts I've given, one of them is the one approved by Mr. President, which I said we can no longer allow contract splitting. The papers I have here show that sometimes they take out 25 billion, under 49 million, 49 million, 49 million, 49 million, 49 million, and the, to and the, the total of 249. There's no contract in NDDC, even if you hear 10 billion that goes to the minister. So they can spend 400 billion. We need the, the, the cooperation of the parliament. And this is where it is very important that the parliament comes in. Because if you go to Thank court, you, the court may say it is not illegal. The laws are not illegal. But it's Thank you, Honorable Minister. Minister. Chairman, I... Chairman, uh, uh, Chairman Ojo, are you going to ask me a question? Uh, oh, no, Honorable Ojo. Minister, sir. <laughs> Honorable <laughs> Minister. Honorable Minister. You have shed light on it. Let's move forward. Um, huh? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, who is that? I have a follow-up question, yes. uh, okay. Honorable Minister. You okay. made mention. He's not, he's, he's not, he's distracted. Honorable Minister. Go ahead. Minister. Thank you. Honorable Member, go ahead. Yes, um, you made mention that at some point in time you had to stop payments for the Lassa Fever um, initiative. 
My question is this. Are you aware that um, between the 8th and 9th of July, in the span of 24 hours, payments of 4.8 billion were made to companies? 4.8 billion for were what? made to companies. For, for what? Payments. Were for distilting. For just this two weeks ago, between 8th and 9th of July 2020, 4.8 billion. I may not know, but payments. you see. And yeah, then, on, secondly, on, uh, uh, my second question is on the no, 17th, no, saying, just they, Friday, the, uh, uh, a company was paid 691 million while this um, investigative hearing was going on. Are you aware of those payments? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't have to be aware of the payments. You know why? Because of the same thing. I said contracts are, are done below 1 billion naira. So any contract, and again, the, all these are his payments, debt. payments, not award payments. No payments. That, that is what you are investigating now. That's why I was telling you that no money is missing. That payments are actually being made to contractors who did jobs. All I insisted was that they must go and evaluate and verify the, the contracts before they make any payment. If they have to settle historical debt, yeah, very well. why they cannot come to me. Very it's well, because, honourable minister. Very well. Um, will you, I appreciate when you said that the only contracts you took to FEC were just three since all this time. One for forensic audit, which was approved, and I am aware that that is in the 2019 budget of the NDDC. The one for the 90 vehicles and the COVID, which you also sent to the Federal Executive Council. Um, from what you said, you knew that there was no budgetary backing no, 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 for no. these two uh, 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 projects, but yet you, got, you went to FEC for them to get approval. That's what you said. Well, and ordinarily, every expenditure must have a budgetary backing. Uh, That's what you said, just will, to confirm it that. Will surprise it, you to know, it will surprise you to know that the 2019 budget had almost $11 billion for, for COVID. And what was uh, expend, uh, uh, taken to Mr. President for approval was only six point seven billion. It was also surprised you to know that the, the, the idea of the contract for the procurement of vehicles went through the Bureau of Public Procurement, which must have done due diligence uh, on the budget. COVID, you, we, together, no, come together with the budget before we presented it to Federal Executive Council. They have their templates. So when something has passed through the Bureau of Public Procurement, it is my job to present it to the Federal Executive Council. Because they have their own criteria. They are very the point thorough. is made, Honorable Minister. The point is made. Thank okay. You. Okay. Honorable, Honorable Ben. Uh, Bapa. <laughs> Honorable Minister, our common leader, you have consistently affirmed that you have only supervised three awards, three contracts. Is that correct? That you have only supervised three contract awards? I think he's not hearing me. Honorable Minister, you said you have only supervised three awards. I'm saying that I have only uh, 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 taken part in three, in three contract awards only. Okay. Not, not even a kilometer of road outside those three. Don't and worry, that's they went what I want to know. And these projects... And, and then, by the way, the last question that my brother asked... Excuse me. No, no, hold on, hold on. The, 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 the vehicles are, are in the budget of 2000. Honorable Minister, I have the floor. Please. A procurement of lead consultant of the forensic audits, emergency procurement of COVID-19, and vehicle procurement. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Are they carried out with 2019 budget or 2020 budget? As at the time that the... Are they carried out with 2019 or 2020 budget? Well, first of all, the, the, the 2020 budget, sorry, the 2019 budget... Honorable was, Mr. You know, Honorable Mr. Sir, was, would you rest and answer the question direct? Sorry, I... I, I direct, I told you the I, direct question. Of this <coughs> Mr. Chairman, the conditions where we are in now does not require bullying. Uh, with due respect, because what no, I'm saying we is... we are not bullying you, Honorable Minister. Answer, just okay, to answer okay. the question that Okay, is. you are respecting me. Honorable That's Minister, you know you, for are, the respect, you, know you are my leader. If I don't hear... And a common leader. So if I, don't I will hear, ask you something that is not good. You can repeat after him. Okay. So what you are saying is that I was involved in three contracts, right? Yes. 
That's and what that said. so far the three contracts, two of them went through the Federal Executive Council. The it Bureau of Public Procurement approved two of them. One is the vehicle. Or were they carried out based on the 2019 or 2020 budget? As at the time these things were done, they were all in the 20, I think 2019 budget. Can you give but us the, the letter that you convert from the National Assembly was 2020 budget? So can you give part us of the, the budget could have started line from in your you. 2019 budget? Hello. You have the budget with you. Can you give us the budget line expressly stating this, these projects uh, or programs? Sorry, I don't run the NDDC. The executive director is here. He can give you the so budget line. So in essence, line. you don't because know, but he supervises. They, 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 they concluded the arrangement with the now PDB my before question they is this. to my office. My question is this. Uh, if, uh, if, do you know the budget Beautiful line? as you have presented it. Please, they, they, they will provide can it to you. Can you listen, sir? If you want the budget line, they will provide it to you. Just give me time, Honorable sir. Minister, please. Listen, sir. If I pass you with this thing, and you had questions, you have two questions, you can and I'm going to give you the two. Since you are a former lawmaker, a lawyer, a former governor, who is very passionate about the Niger Delta region, knowing fully well that the BPP Act provides for every project, every procurement will be appropriation backed. Is it good to confirm that you misled the BPP and the Federal Executive Council to approve or give you the certificate of no objection? That is one. Uh, my, uh, then two. Two, with your common knowledge of the region, a former governor who has a certificate of uncommon performance, today, with your love for the region, what will you tell us now? The status of the audit, the forensic audit, bearing in mind as a lawyer that you cannot put something on nothing because the, 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 the procurement ab initio is faulty and fraudulent. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, may, may I plead with you not to use the word fraudulent? I mentioned to you that there are two sources of revenue to the NDDC. One is from federal allocation, and the other one is from the, uh, the internally generated revenue from the oil companies. There is no way you can go and start procurement process or even obtain procurement. The award of the procurement letter for the forensic audit was given at the time you had appropriated 1.25 billion. So how can that be fraudulent? You have passed the budget in both houses on the 4th and the 5th, and the letter is dated 12th of, of March. How can that be fraudulent? You start procurement processes, but until you have money, you, can, you cannot give an award letter. Are you yeah. telling me okay. that the Bureau of Public Procurement will okay. commit fraud? Honorable Are you Minister. saying that they will not go through due diligence? Before they give a certificate of no objection, Honorable please, Mr. I, I, yeah. may, may I please that he withdraws the word from the lens? Honorable no, Mr. Because no, we must no. respect no. each other. No, please, please. No. Honorable Mr. 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 Chairman, Chairman. <laughs> may I please that the member withdraws that word from the lens? No, Honorable no. Mr. Chairman. You cannot say that, that the award that passed through Bureau of Public Procurement passed through Federal Honorable, Council was from the lens. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, we progress because. Before you, there were a lot of agencies that have come before this committee. But that is to your knowledge. Yes. Not and to my knowledge. BPP has their own position in respect to this issue. So let's leave it. All about next. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, Honorable Minister, my questions will be very short and simple. I will not delve into contract or money issue, but I want to ask you on what I consider conflict of interest and based on the law. Hello, Mr. I'm going to specifically part four miscellaneous and section 21 of the Act. You are the supervising minister, correct, sir? You are also the monitoring agent of NDDC, sir. You're also supposed to sit at the uh, affairs of NDDC. 21 says about presidential monitoring team to monitor the affairs and runnings 
of NDDC. Mr. Chairman, if I may read, said one, monitor the management of the funds of the Commission and implementation of the projects of the Commission. Two, have access to the books of accounts and other records of the Commission at all times and submit periodical reports to the Presidency Commander-in-Chief. Minister, my worry is that you are also supervising the auditors, forensic or otherwise. That is three in one. Does it not amount to conflict of interest that you, your PAMSAC, director of projects, and the likes of, are now the presidential monitoring team monitoring the activities of NDDC. On the other side, you also give policy directions and guidelines to NDDC. Does this not amount to being the goalkeeper, being the striker, being the referee? Thank you. Well, uh, I remember my brother, sir, you are not totally right. If you know why NDDC is where it is today, you know that it is because of lack of proper monitoring, lack of proper supervision. You just saw a lacuna where a contract of over four billion could be given out and the minister has no single idea. The only way, the only nexus in the law that can bring the minister to know what is going on and even request book of accounts is through the PMC, the Presidential Monitoring Committee. If the minister cannot ask the NDDC to bring its expenses for scrutiny, then it means that the minister can stay for four years and they will spend over one trillion and the minister will not know. This, this is the reason why it is important that the minister in the, uh, uh, should really be appointed as the chairman of the presidential monitoring committee so that he can have access to the daily expenses of the NDDC or weekly expenses or monthly expenses. Otherwise, you will not even be properly briefed. Because it's my responsibility to brief you as a committee of the NDDC from time to time. I, just, I gave you a very small example that almost 1.1 trillion contracts were given out by the administration of Brian Bamfa, and over 280 billion were paid out. But the minister did not know because these things are done below the threshold of the minister and under the radar of 250 million. If we, if we must change Niger Delta, we must leave semantics. We must look at the real issues thank, thank and, you, and see how we can sir. tinker with, with the policies yeah, and all you. that. And that is why this forensic audit is the answer. Because the Th forensic Th audit Th at the Th end... Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Yeah, yes, one question. Yes, we'll come. We'll come to you. One question. Who? Who is Mr. Me? Chairman, my fellow colleagues... Uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So I have the floor. Let me just do. Honorable Minister, sir. May I ask you, sir, pursuant to provision of section 85, sub 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if it's in order, for you to have engaged a forensic auditor. That is one. Two. And even if you have to, the constitution lays the foundation clearly. Issues bordering on remuneration. And even the auditors you should engage. Did you relate or consult with the Auditor General of the Federation? Please take note. Another question I want to ask, Honorable Minister, as a learned lawyer, sir, is if IMC is known to the law, if IMC, Interim Management Committee, if it is known to the law, in view of the provision of, uh, of the Niger Data Development Commission Establishment Act, Section 2, is it not an aberration to have IMC in place? Because, in my opinion, this is the cause of this problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Let me start from the aspect of uh, the IMC. The Nigerian constitution gives 
the uh, powers to the president that he who can appoint in substantive position can also appoint in interim position. Two, section seven, subsection three of the NDDC Act gives the president the power of control, the power of supervision, and the power of guidance over the Niger Delta Development Commission. Three, the Niger Delta Development Commission did not start today to have interim management. In fact, they have had sole administrators, up to two or three in the past. This IMC did not start now. It started even in the days of Timia Library, as far back as 2002, 2003, when the, uh, even when Akwari left, what they had was interim management. They've had so many. If you, if you, the president has the power to appoint somebody in substantive position, according to the constitution, he also has the power to do so in, a, in, a, in acting capacity. And then, of course, they are acting. And again, he has the power of total control of the NDDC to give power of supervision and guidance. Look at your section three, uh, sub -se section seven, sub section three, very well. So, and then also look at the condition. I, don't, I can't quote right now because I don't want to make mistakes since I'm under oath. But I think if you look at maybe section 148 and all that, you even see a place where the, the, the constitution gives power to the president to hand over any parasata to the vice president or to a minister. And then, of course, from there, they, they, will, uh, they, they have the authority. And I also mentioned the administrative uh, guidelines to you. I've attached everything. Please, when you go through my depositions, which is on oath. When you look through those things, all those questions you're asking will be answered. It's, it's okay. Finally, finally, it's uh, okay. finally Honorable it's Minister, okay. sir. Honorable Minister, I've perused the... I'm not in agreement with your submission, Honorable Minister. I have perused the Act, setting up NDDC. I have not seen anywhere... I have not seen anywhere in the Act where you have a role to play. That is one. Secondly, sir, when you look at which section 20 of Public Procurement Act, I am worried. Sorry? When you look at the provisions of the Public Procurement Act, section 20 and 21, I'm a bit worried that you are playing some roles which ordinarily should have been taken by the Chief Accounting Officer of the agency. If we assume without considering that you have contracts I brought the threshold of NDDC that will go to the FEC. The Act clearly places responsibility on the shoulder of the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry. Uh, I'm saying this with due respect, sir, that you, you, you are now looking as if you are the image of NDDC, as if you are the Chief Executive Officer of NDDC, which is not. As if, uh, sir, sorry. as if you are the, as if, I mean, the way the public perceives or I and some members of the parliament perceive as if you are the, uh, the, the MD of NDDC. Whereas in actual fact, Section 2 is settles who should do what. It is the CEO that the Act mandates to ensure compliance with the provisions of the Public Procurement Act. And sir, from, from what has been presented there, there are very clear, 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 it's a clear indication that this act has been raped severally. And the consequences, the consequences are anchored under Section 58.5. Nothing else. Nothing else. Thank you. Sorry, may I, may I inform you, sir, that it is the NDDC that procured the forensic auditors. If you look at the letters to the Bureau of Public Procurement, the NDDC because it was now the, uh, the agency to do the payment. We had to discontinue from the ministry when Mr. President approved that the money should be paid from NDDC. So it's, the act clearly says that it is the agency that is paying that must do the procurement. All the, the letters to uh, Bureau of Public Procurement came through, uh, came to the, uh, went, went straight from the NDDC to the uh, uh, Bureau of Public Procurement. But they, in, in, in forwarding the letters, they sometimes pass it through the supervising minister and also copy the NDDC. So it okay. is not the minister okay. that does the program. Okay. And by minister. the way, we have the concurrence Thank of you. the Office of the Auditor General Thank of you. the Federation in writing Thank you, to Honorable undertake Chairman. the forensic audit. Thank you, Honorable uh, Chairman, hello, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs and uh, our guests.
the honorable minister my question is very simple the essence of your appointment as one of the most performed governor in the region was to go and right the wrongs associated with NDDC in the past and these wrongs emanated or ranges from contract splitting, abandon of projects, overpriced contracts, and these have actually led to billions of Naira projects abandoned in the Niger Delta area. Today, you have taken the mantle of leadership to actually run, to right this wrong. My question now is, within your period as a minister, did you pay for any emergency repair or emergency rehabilitation of roads? And if you supervise the payment, because you can pay, you are only supervising the NDDC. If you supervise such payment, what are the measures you applied in order to make sure that those anomalies observed in the past were not actually seen during your own administration? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I must say that I, I, I thank you for the question. Um, for me, the NDDC must change. And I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that the Mr. President gave me this opportunity. I, when I became a minister, I did not know which ministry I was going to go into. One of the things I did was to ensure that they did proper evaluation and verification. In some of those instances, you'll see that somebody who had a contract of $1 billion, at the end, what they paid out ended up being 400 or 300 We bought equipment for them to make sure that when they go to site, they evaluate and assess exactly what is on ground before they do any payment. So some of the contractors lost over 40% of the initial contract value. In fact, in about the 14 contracts, 14, 10 to 14 contracts, the NDDC saved $1.6 when, when when they were doing their payments. But don't forget, like I said, these payments for now cannot come to, towards the minister because almost all the projects of NDDC were done under the threshold of ministerial approval. So my job as a minister is to observe what went wrong, work with the forensic auditors, then come back to parliament so that if we need to tinker with the law, we do so in order to reposition the Niger Delta region. I speak as somebody who worked in Niger Delta. If I did not dualize the road, I did up to 200 kilometers in eight years. But I can tell you that in the 19 years of the existence of the NDDC, you cannot find even 10 kilometers of dualized road. And why okay. I need the, uh, the cooperation of the parliament? Okay. Is a, a place, uh, sorry, sir, let me mention this. With a, a place like Wari to Sapele, for five kilometers only, during the rainy season, nobody can pass. A place like Elebele, in, uh, oh, okay, and I will start. Under two billion, uh, under, the bridge collapsed. Uh, that's, okay. that's okay. That's okay. That's uh, okay. You, you know, you know, we know you very well. We know you very well. So, if you are giving the room, I know we will not live here. But I need so the coverage. That, no, thank you. I'm coming. Honorable Idris, please. Thank you. I need the cooperation oh. of Parliament. I am Honorable Kabira Alassan. I represent Torano Bunko, the Chief of Federal Consensus, Mr. Chairman from Kano. And my question goes straight to the Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, there are so many allegations and counter allegations between your humble self as the Minister of Energy Delta and the former MD of NDDC, Mr. Joy Nene. Uh, Nigerians want to know what cause that rift because the attention of the entire nation was focused on you and the former MD. We would like you to shed more light on that, please. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir. By, by federal seculars, ministers are not allowed to approve payments for, for parasitals. So I've directed my permanent secretary to make copies of those seculars available to you. So it is not really my business to approve uh, payments for parasitals. But where they need to come to me when it is up to one billion, even at that, I must go to federal executive council to go and get the proper approval. And so most of the payments that they are doing cannot come to the minister. That's number one. Then number two, I think the, the, the last question 
uh, was on a huh? Oh. So okay, the, okay, the Mr. Uh, no, that's, that's the, okay, that's okay. No, no, somebody okay. asked me a question on the former managing director. The former managing director of the NDDC was relieved of her appointment when I received a letter from the then chief of staff, may so rest in perfect peace, that she did not possess the requisite qualifications to be there. For instance, we have written twice to the uh, National Youth Service Corps, and twice they have insisted that she never served. So she doesn't have NYC certificate, neither does she have exemption. But I think the problem here is that we do not want to scandalize Hello, anybody. Mr. So Mayor what we Minister. did, I'm coming, my dear, let me answer the question. What we did, what we did was to expand the interim management and then replace, uh, replace the then managing director when we saw these flaws. But I pointed out on television that she was relieved of her appointment, not because of anything, but because of insubordination. My permanent secretary wrote seven letters to her, even to attend Federal Executive Council meeting on the 5th of February, to come and give a scorecard. We have what we call ministerial mandate, to give scorecard of the ministry and parasitals. And she refused to attend. She felt she was bigger than the minister, and her budget was higher than the ministry. So for insubordination, that was the reason why she was relieved of her post. But however, there were a lot of undercurrents. For instance, we, don't want to, we didn't want to scandalize her since she did not have the... She even swore to a fake affidavit that she... Mr. Chairman, uh, honorable, honorable Mr. Honorable Mr. Honorable Mr. Honorable That she had the NYC when she did not honorable have... Honorable Mr. Honorable Mr. So may I... May I, I can Mr. Chairman, Honorable Mr. Please. Please. Uh, honorable Mr. Honorable Mr. Honorable Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your mic. Um, I'm Shaba Ibrahim. I represent local Jakogi Federal Constituency. Honorable Minister, can you refer to your the annex to your five to your presentation? That is the letter from um, the Bureau of Public Procurement. Have you seen it? Annex to your five. I've seen, I've seen it, sir. You've seen it, sir. Can you look at the second paragraph, beginning from the Bureau of Public Procure Procurement, having examined your request and all the documents forward, forwarded, confirmed that the projects have satisfied all due process requirements. Do you still maintain that you have no direct dealings in respect of contracts of the NDDC with the BPP? Just mentioned to you, this letter is a response to NDDC application to the Bureau of Public Procurement. But of course, they, they have to forward it through the supervising minister. I mentioned that to you. The letter is a response to that of the NDDC, the procur uh, procuring agency, because uh, they are the ones to pay. Honorable but, Minister, but as they, a they lawyer, a the copy issue of is raised. He speaks they... for himself. Thank you. Um, Ms. Minister. Um, if you look at Annex 9 of your document submitted to us here under Holt, Annex 9, your document that was submitted to us under Holt here, yes. I don't know if you could go through that. Annex 9 of your document, which is dated 29th of June 2020. Have you seen the Annex 9 of it now? Have you seen it? Have you seen the document? Okay. So, can I take you on that now? Okay. From the Bureau of Public Procurement. Due process certificate of no objection. For the award of contract for the various consultancy services for the forensic audit of the activities of the Niger Delta Development Commission between 2001 August 2019 in favor of nine forensic 
audit firms and it was dated June 29, 2020. And the project cost as requested is 1 billion 455 million 0492350 only. I don't know, you said you've not been having any interference between the board and your ministry. That was what you told us here. But this is just dated 29th of June, 2020. And it was written, or the certificate of no objection was sent to your office. And you must have followed it up with what my friend asked, my honorable colleague. You wrote, you wrote to them giving directives for the approval of this okay. no objection um, certificate. But it is a, a very long process, and we've had a lot of uh, go, uh, back and forth. We have over nine letters to that effect. I didn't want to bother you with all. But the commencement of the, of the procurement started with a letter from the NDDC as a procuring agency. Otherwise, they would not have a right in law to pay. And because of the fact that I am the supervising minister, of the NDDC. They would write to me because I'm the one to go to Federal Executive Council with this uh, BPP approval. And then look under. You will see where they copied the NDDC for the information because uh, the, the conclusion, the, uh, the NDDC cannot go to Federal Executive Council. Just as a follow-up, you said here on the hold as well that when the president said that the board should be the ones to be pay, uh, to pay for the forensic that you opted out as the Minister of Niger Delta no, to I allow the board to, to do it. The But here, as you rightly said, that the managing director, that is the acting MD, was only copied. Was? It was only copied. Yes. That is, you were the one that ran the show. The, ma the managing director and the NDDC commenced the process of procurement. But when they, but, uh, no objection is given, it will come to the minister. Because it is the place of the minister to take this uh, 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 approval to the Federal Executive okay. Council. NDDC okay. cannot. Okay. You but the NDDC that. must okay. also Mr. be Chairman, informed. You, come, uh, go, go, go. you understand what I'm saying? So it's not, uh, uh, it is not, there's nothing hidden. Uh, we are working uh, in partnership. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, sir. Which, which of the budget was this request predicated on? Well, if you look at which, was the, which of the budget if was you look, this request predicated on? If you look at your, uh, uh, the 2019 budget, for instance, the federal government had appropriated about 80, uh, 80 billion or so to the NDDC. If you look at the 2020 budget that became operational, the federal, uh, the federal government also, on 17 December, appropriated uh, another uh, territory transfer to the NDDC. Uh, if you have that budget, as of okay. January. But because of the volatility of the oil price, that has continued to go through revision. I think what is there now is about $46 billion. So on a monthly basis, the, the federal government does give money to the NDDC, but it stopped only in this June. Now, the processes, the processes have been on. We have not yet, before we can do an award letter, we must depend on your budget of 2020. So there is no award letter yet. And moreover, there was even a mistake from your side. When the clerk of the National Assembly forwarded a letter purportedly uh, sending the approval of the National Assembly for a budget of 2020. So that letter, I understand, was only corrected last week. That letter was only corrected last week. And it does not be co uh, that letter Mr. has Chairman. not been corrected in the sense that we still have that letter. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm attached to Mr. That's okay. And okay. Then, so, that's okay. I know you don't want to thank have any you, fault. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I love you don't that's want to okay. have any fault. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Kolade oh, Akinjo yeah, is my name, uh, Elijah Serufra Constituency. My question is this, Mr. Minister. From your submission, you had indicated that you are vested with the powers of Mr. President to supervise NDDC, Section 7.3. You, you alluded to that in your paper. And from what you also said, that uh, it appears to me that you were the one who recommended IMC, the first IMC, and you were also the one who recommended the second IMC. And I'm sure you did, you did that in pursuant to the laws establishing NDDC. How, how do you reconcile 
uh, someone who is a, a medical doctor to become an executive director of project in line with section 12 sub 1a that says that says that the director shall have such qualification and experience as appropriate for a person required to perform the function of those offices under this act. It, it, it appears to me, Mr. Minister, that an executive director of finance and administration will be an accountant. And it also appeared to me, based on precedent, that someone that's supposed to be an executive director of project, considering the terrain, the geography, and the exigency of what you refer to as forensic auditor, how do you place a medical personnel to become an executive director of project? That's number one question. The second question, yeah, I, I mentioned this because I think it's important for us to ask this kind of question. The other one, sir, Mr. Minister, is that the, the first IMC claimed that they spent $8 billion. The current IMC, within the same space of time, is, is accredited to have spent about $81 billion under a forensic dispensation. Is it wise to continually or continually, continuous to, uh, continually spend such humongous money under a forensic dispensation? My thinking will always be that you reduce spending and then you... Control. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. Your question is very germane. First, you are asking the qualification for the office of the Executive Director. I, I agree with you. But that person should be somebody who is versed in project execution. The greatest project today in the world is medical, and that is COVID-19. Even, uh, 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 I'm, I'm coming now, and the budget of the NDDC, the budget, uh, I'm, uh, my sister, please, don't be angry. Honorable Minister, was no, there COVID, was there COVID when you are protecting? Chairman, chairman, I want, I, want, I want to be protected. No, you are protected. I want to be protected. Was there COVID when he was Sorry, appointed in protected. the first interim? Chairman, I want to be protected. Chairman, am I protected? Am I protected? Hello, Mr. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for protecting me, because my sister was the EB role. Let me say that if you look at the year-in, year-out of budget of the NDDC, 60% of the budget of NDDC every year is medical. And you also have to know that malaria has killed more children in Nigeria than even accident and than any other thing. Even before the coming of the COVID, 60% of the budget of the NDDC is medical. So who will best fit the position of executive director in NDDC than a medical doctor to, to go and implement the 60% of the budget? I'm not the uh, one that does uh, the budget. You do the budget. Do your analysis and you find out that the most fitting person that is qualified okay, to okay. be there is a medical doctor that's because okay. of your budget. And then, that's last, okay. lastly, sir, lastly, sir, lastly, sir, the, the last question he asked was about expenditure during this period. We cannot close down Niger Delta because of the security implications of the region. Sorry, sir. We cannot close the question. Yes, I have this one. Uh, thank you, Chairman. All who colleagues. Yes, now just. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do I have the floor? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, I listen to you very attentively through all your submission. But I just want to tell you one thing. You came here to mislead the parliament on your under oath. That's what you have done deliberately. I have my argument, and it should be in line with Section 20 of Public Procurement Act. So, sorry, sir. This is your report. This is what you have presented to the committee. And look at the annex to 9, 11, 6, 10, and 8. All these correspondences 
all these correspondences are between you, Biro, BPP, and the Ministry of Niger Delta. And you have just said, Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, please. Honorable Minister, I will still repeat myself. I said you decided to just come here and mislead the parliament. And on oath, I'm relying my argument under Section 20, Subsection 2 of Public Procurement Act. And I want to put it to you that your submission, the way you, all the annexures, 8, 9, 10, 11, are misleading. And before then, you said you have no any link of any contract between yourself and the NDDC. Your just job is just to supervise. But correspondence shows that they are giving you approval, conveyance approval of forensic auditors, contract, whatever, between you and the BBB. Chairman, I want to read, with your permission, I want to read section 20, subsection 2 of the Public Procurement Act, which says, accounting officer of every procuring entity shall have overall responsibility for the planning, organization of tenders, evaluation of tenders, and execution of all procurement in a particular responsibility. But, Mr. Minister, you have taken over the duty as the MD, acting MD of the...